Hello everyone and welcome to Bevan's Builds. I'm Daryl and in today's video I want to cover something that I see actually asked and answered quite frequently wrong. And what that is is how to take a two-prong outlet and replace it with a three-prong outlet. And I'm going to be discussing several ways that you can accomplish that and get a ground or at least get a three-prong outlet the legal way and meeting code. So if this is something that interests you, stick around because it's coming up. Now, first, just kind of trying to jump right into things, you're going to find out that a lot of your older homes that do have the two-prong outlets actually still actually have a ground inside of the wall. And here's what I mean by that. A lot of times you're going to see, or you're going to find anyway, that the inside of the wall is metal clad cable. And there's a real easy way to test and see if there's metal clad cable in that wall. And let's start by doing just that. First things first before we get started, and I always like to make sure I explain this to people because a lot of people don't know. When you're looking at an outlet, even if it's just a two-prong outlet, and let's pretend that the ground isn't there, you'll always notice that one hole is bigger or smaller, I should say, <laughs> one hole smaller than the other. And there's a reason for that. The small hole is always your hot. The large hole is always your neutral. So for the test that we're going to be doing, we're going to be testing from the hot side of your outlet. Another way you can do that if the outlet is outside of the box is the hot side always has the brass colored screws and the neutral side always has the silver colored screws. But anyway, let's get started with the test. Now, I physically do not have any two prong outlets in my house or my garage, and I didn't want to have to buy any, but it doesn't matter if this is a two or a three prong outlet or not because the test is still the same way or it's performed the same way anyway. All you're gonna simply do, and actually let me put that around the other way, is you're going to take your lead, you're gonna put it into the hot of the outlet, and then all you're simply gonna do is you're gonna take your meter and go to the center screw that holds on your cover plate. And now you can see I've got 122 volts. So now what that tells me is that this outlet is grounded, even with the metal plate. Now, mind you, because I got a metal plate, I can touch anywhere, and I'm going to show that I have power. Uh, but most houses I know have plastic plate covers, especially in the old houses. So you want to make sure you touch that screw. Now, say, for example, that your screw is covered in paint and you can't get to the metal. All you simply got to do is take that screw out and you can touch to the hole, the threads of the hole, to do this same test. But once you see that, you know you have a ground. So all you physically have to do, if it showed you had power, you're going to have a metal box in the wall. This is what's called a handy box. And this should be what's mounted inside your wall and what the outlet is screwed down to. So all you would physically do is take one of these nice little ground whips, and then this end has the screw on it, so you could bend your wire up. You take it, you screw it into that little bump right there, and then you take your prong end right here, and you place it on the ground of the outlet. But let's say you don't want to do that. You don't want to have to replace the outlet. They do also make these little guys. Now this is a two to three prong adapter. And there's usually a little metal clip on that three-prong adapter. And if you've ever seen these and wondered what that is there for, it's because what you do is you take that center screw out that's holding your plate cover on, you put this in, and then because you would have that screw out, you would then take your screw, put it through that tab, and then screw it into place. Now this would stay a permanent fixture on your wall, but now you actually have a equipment ground on that outlet. Now, what happens if you do the test I just showed you and you get nothing? That means you don't have a ground, which means you probably don't have a metal box, which means you probably don't have metal clad cable in the wall, inside of the wall as well. It's not a big deal, but don't ever just take the two prong outlet out and put a three prong outlet in because that's gonna get you in trouble. It's gonna get you hurt. But there is a solution, and it's actually a solution that the code allows for. And believe it or not, it's quite simple. What you do is you remove that two-prong outlet, and you get one of these guys. This is a GFCI outlet. Now, you can put this in your wall and use it as a three-prong plug and still meet code. Here's the cinch with it, though. You're truly not ground protected, so you're not going to be protecting your electronic components. But the other thing I want to point out is when you use this to give yourself a three-prong outlet, there's a sticker sheet that comes with every GFCI. 
and I'm trying to get this up as close as possible for you because I want you to be able to read this. If you notice, one of those stickers says, no equipment ground. So what you would actually do if you put this in place of your two prong outlet is you stick this in the wall and then you stick that sticker that says no ground protection and that gives you a three prong outlet in your meeting code. And that my friends is pretty much it. I didn't want to make a very long video and I didn't think anybody wanted to sit and watch me fumble around with wiring trying to plug it all together. So I thought this would be the quickest and most direct route for making a video to explain how to take a two prong outlet and make it a three prong outlet. But I do wanna say if you have trouble and you wanna know what wire goes where, I do have a video link right here that will show you exactly how you would wire up another outlet. But anyway, that's all for this video. So as always, thank you for coming to Bevan's Builds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below. And hopefully we'll see you next time on Bevan's Builds.